they fight 12 billion bots every month. I want to buy the stuff, but I can't buy the stuff. They're not letting me buy the stuff. So we're like, well, if you're not letting me buy the stuff, I'm going to own the stuff instead. And and what I mean by own is ownership and equity. Ooh, Ooh. L's into equity. Yo, so that $200 billion streetwear market we talked about, 18 to 35 year olds, we account for 92% of the spend. We're buying the stuff. We don't get any of that right, equity. You're saying we are buying the stuff, but not the stock. Let's talk about how I'm going to come up big time in my sleep. We'll double that. We'll literally invest in you. That's crazy. I, I came here to talk to you guys about things I love and it turned into a therapy session. Five years and beyond ain't sexy, but it's gonna be sexy when that thing becomes real. Welcome everybody to another episode of Upside Mindset. Today we're sitting down with Jackie. He's the founder of an app that is trying to change the way that sneaker heads think about building wealth through the brands that they consume, man. This is really interesting and very relatable to a lot of us. Hey, man, thank you for joining us today, Jackie. All the way from SF, what is Neon Money Club? It's an app that people can download on their phone right now, right? Absolutely. So Neon Money Club is a lifestyle club, um, and we help people build what we call the long money mindset. And so we do this through financial education. We do this through premium tools, like investing directly into the stock market. Um, and like, it's, it's more about you buy Nikes. What if you can own Nike stock as well? Oh, oh, very okay. interesting. All right, guys. So we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it, the details of the app. We're also going to just get into the larger just sneakerhead culture in general. But real quick, Jackie, you look like a break dancer right now. Tell me why you're legit, though. Yo, you, hello, come, you got a real background in banking and finance. So um, most recently, I was the head of insights for all of JP Morgan. And I don't look like it, but I feel like you, you got you to gotta come to these meetings and let people know that people that look like us, whether we're 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 you know, earth tone or, or come from, from, from the city or from urban culture. Like we have a seat at the table and, and that's what we're trying to do for everybody. Right. There was not a lot of people dressed at JP Morgan like yourself, right? There wasn't. And I think, I think, you know, the, the, the street hit cred comes from like, I was in the free lunch club, right? I, I grew up super, super poor, but some, some way somehow made it to banking. And it's like, I, I'm never going to forget where I come from. And, and my whole thing is like, how do you bring, the masses to to places that we're no, normally not invited to. Right, and you, that sort of leads you to the creation of Neon Money Club, right? Absolutely. Like, what? What? How does it go? Like, you're at J.P. Morgan. You're dressing crazy. The people are probably looking at you like, I don't know. This is our head of insights. Uh, is he a, the designer? Do, or is J.P. Morgan launching a streetwear? Does he need to on? wear T-shirts all the time? He's got some fresh ink showing. Oh, he's from the city. Okay, yeah. It's, sure it's crazy because uh, my my co-founder and CEO uh, Luke Bailey, he was 18 years in banking. Um, he used to be an ex music producer, and so we linked up because of our unhealthy obsession like you guys have uh with shoes and our whole thing was like how do we take what we know and love which is sneaker culture the culture um and bridge it to to our twenty thousand hours in banking right because you know it's, it's a secret society you 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 take a uber you you go get you go to the pharmacy you see people with 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 drip you're like oh these are my people and so like we we realize whether that's a kid from west harlem or that kid from west Wisconsin, it's the common denominator that brings us all together. For sure, yeah. Like sneaker culture, it's almost like um, it's like hard to describe. It's almost I, like probably being into like alt rock music in like the late eighties or something like that. I, like I would say it's like people. a it's like a language group. You know what I mean? Like facts, when you facts. see somebody, you know what to ask them. You know how to talk to them, and you assume that even if you come from different backgrounds, that you're still gonna understand and bond over something. Right. This yeah. person knows some of the same niche things that I know. That my even my cousin and my parents have no clue what I'm talking about. That's okay. a fact. Because like I think a lot of people count us out, but like think about streetwear. It's a two hundred billion dollar market, and and that's not small. So we're like we're we're low key mainstream now, but at the same time, it's like there are a lot of niche things that we could bond over, like like waiting outside of a full locker for 14 hours for the Conquers or, or whatever, right? We have those war stories that, that kind of string us together. Yeah, right. I, I want to ask you, so to kind of get into the mid-level uh, view of all this, like what is the main disconnect that you guys see between like collecting sneakers, reselling sneakers, just loving sneakers and hype beast stuff in general, in general, like, you know, you know, just brand, cool brands. Like what's the disconnect between people who love those things and like making money and building wealth? I feel like if, if you think about the culture nowadays, it's all about the instant flip. Yo, I'm trying to make a buck. I need this right now. I, I need this drop. Right, panda dunks. That was the yeah, main thing. Like right? I, and it's just like this this instant gratification kind of like takes away from 
our long money mindset. Like we're like, how do you build generational wealth overnight? You don't. And so like, how, how can you kind of like bridge the two? And that's an inter interesting question in which we're trying to tackle right now. And so our whole thing is like, let's take what you already do, which is buy the brands. And, and, you know, if you put together dope outfits, how can you put a piece of that into investing into your long money mindset? And, and that's what we're here to do. Right. You're saying that that's the goal of Neon Money Club. Absolutely. It's basically take people who are in the street wear sneakerheads, uh, these things, bare bricks, and then basically get them to invest into the same companies that own the stuff they're already buying. Now, now I, wa I want to say that when you walk up to the average sneakerhead, somebody who loves, a kid who loves sneakers, right, and you try to talk to them about the stock market, maybe they heard of Robin Hood, they might have heard yeah. of Wall Street bets. Yeah, they got a and, friend who did Dogecoin for yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> GameStop a little bit. But I guess, like, how do you explain to them and be like, hey, actually, guys, like, it's cool. Like, you can actually take the time and the knowledge and the love of all this and it can start to build wealth for you. Like when it comes to the stock market, like how do you t tell them that? Yeah, because I would immediately I think you. the sneakerhead mindset is more almost into day trading. Cause they're That's like, they, it. They're, That's day, it. they're day trading That's the sneakers, it. right? Like, oh yeah, That's I got it. the, the pandas low and then I'm flipping it high and there's a high liquidity because everybody wants the panda. So I, easy, I can flip it to like, somebody. Like our age group yeah. is our great consumers, but we're not great owners of anything. And especially the stock market, right? Yo, so that $200 billion streetwear market we talked about, 18 to 35 year olds, we own 92% of the spend. We account for 92% of the spend. That same population only owns 1% of the stock market. So what does that tell you? It tells us that we're buying the stuff, but the companies profit off of us because they build the equity. We don't get any of that right, equity. You're saying 18 to 35 year olds, they fund the CPG companies <laughs> and boost the stock but they don't own any of the stocks of those companies that are actually seeing their equity increase. We are buying the stuff, but not the stock. And we're, this is a big disconnect. It's like, and, and you know, we're all Asian here. It's like when our parents say you'd rather own something than to, to rent it. And so, yeah, I might own these Nike Panda dunks, but I'm, I'm not really owning any equity that, that ultimately builds towards my generational wealth. Well, okay. because that dunk, the dunks, almost any shoe, most 99.9% .9 of the shoes are a depreciating asset, right? And so they fall and they crumble. It and it immediately goes down in value if you wear it. And, and they crumble, right? But I mean, that's not, no shades of sneakerheads because I'm a sneakerhead myself, but like, it's, it's more like, unless you have like the off-white Virgil's, like Chicago ones, like it's, it, it doesn't turn into generational wealth. So you brought up this right. crazy stat and you said, so the Jordan brand made Nike 19 billion dollars in the past five years right and in the past five years nike stock went from 57 dollars to 125 dollars so that means if you had owned nike stock at that time and still bought a bunch of jordans and nikes and contributed to that 19 billions of dollars your you would have made money just both easily. ways though that's you right. made money on the, on the flip of the actual sneakers but you would have made money on the stock as well that's a fact and and you had mentioned like robin hood right and so when you when you talk about the sneaker game whether it's stock x or like uh, part of it, StockX, or, or um, and then the equivalent is Robinhood on the stock market. I, th I feel like a lot of people think about Robinhood as day trading and like, yo, I'm, I'm trying to do an instant flip. Where we come in that's a little bit differently is like, yo, we're trying to talk about five years and beyond. Five years and beyond ain't sexy, but it's going to be sexy when that thing becomes real. And so our whole thing is like, how do you flip this mindset of like, shit, I need things now. I need things right now. I mean, I need it yesterday to like, you know what? I, I could do some of that for the immediate, but also like, let's talk about how I'm going to come up big time with, in my sleep. Yeah, it's even. true that Robin Hood feels like they're trying to encourage day trading through the charting and everything like GameStop, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what they're trying. It, it, it feels like a video game when you're playing Robin Hood. Why wouldn't people just go buy Nike stock on Robin Hood instead of going through Neon Money Club? I think it's it's part of the storytelling. And so when you think about Robin Hood, they, they might promote day trading. They might have complex graphs and and and, and standard deviations of, of things. And our whole thing is like, yo, we're going to tell you what the long term could be. And you think about who Robin Hood targets. It targets the the 60% of Americans who who are 40 percent of americans who already know something about investing our whole thing is like yo we're targeting the 60 percent of americans that don't know anything about investing but they know brands and so if we can walk you into the stock market with brands so nike is it's nike um supreme one of the biggest brands in the world owned by vf corp vf corp also owns tim's 
Vans, North Face. And so, like, if we can walk you through brands to, to companies to, to then, like, REITs and ETFs, we – it, it just becomes a, a, a funnel into deeper and, and bigger things. And you guys will do that on the Neon Money Club. Absolutely. You, guys will, you do like, that today. Like, I will understand who owns LVMH and all the subsidiaries and the consolidation and multiple sub-brands. And, and, and you know what's crazy? And I think this is what's so interesting and also maybe one of the challenges that you guys face is connecting these two sides of the brain. That's this hustle, hustle, get sneakers because we all know the sneaker game. It can be a very quick flip. It can be uh, you, you stand dopamine, in line. Dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you're like, oh, I- $40, feel- $40, $40. I, know, I got now, friends now. who have good jobs and who he he rides around in a Tesla, but he loves that hand to hand interaction between sneaker boxes because he's just that type of guy. The smell, yeah, the cell. And I'm saying like it's connecting these two sides of the brain of thinking long term, but hustling at the same time. And hustling oftentimes is associated with quick money flips. So now you're like, wait, while you're doing the quick money flips, guys, set aside a little bit in the brands that you support because you're gonna help keep this stock high in a way, in an indirect way. Um, so now you're going to get benefit from both the ends. So win-win. So it's long-term and short-term thinking. It's kind of crazy. But how does, I get it. Real quick, like, how does somebody who's a young Asian-American even start something like this? Because, like, you went to Stanford, right? So I guess for somebody, it's like, people are thinking, what, is that what it takes to start an app? Like, because everybody's probably like, yeah, everybody who starts an app went to Stanford. Or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what goes into it where it's just like, yo, how does this even work? I feel like, you know... I think, I think I'm guided by my North Star. And so as a kid, my North Star was always say, yo, I'm trying to pay for my mom's rent. Because I grew up um, single parent, low income. She worked three jobs and she barely spoke English. In SF. In SF. And so my shit was like, how can I pay for her bills? And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go to the library, study, got it to Stanford. Um, I worked in automotive for a long time. And then I ended up in banking, not because I love banking. It was because it was the quickest way to get to my North Star. And so, right, because banking does pay a lot off the rip, right? And so, like, like the first year, you oh, could get paid. Bro, like the bonus structure in, bon- in in banking is crazy. And so, my whole thing was like, all right, if if I can't beat them, I'm gonna join them. I'm gonna get this money, pay for my mom's bills, and and then and then some way somehow I fell in love with the idea of like, yo, nobody looks like me. I was the youngest executive director running all insights at J.P. Morgan that looked like me. And so I was like, shit, like, if, if I can inspire one other kid to, to, to do something where everyone and everything is telling you you can't do it, um, then I've won. And so my North, North Star has kind of evolved from paying my mom's bills because, like, I could do that now um, into, like, I have a three-year-old. And so my whole thing is, like, how, how can I give her the tools to kick ass in a world where they don't want her to kick ass? Whether it's the way we look, whether it's gender, I feel like – there, there's something there, and I, I think we can make that impact. For sure, for sure. So that goes back, ties back into Neon Money Club, because obviously, you know, you're from the city, the inner city. A lot of people are really into brands and sneaker culture, but it is true that majority of those people do not invest, and they're probably not going to. Or, or, or you know, some of them will, but not a majority. Absolutely. And, and that's a huge opportunity for us, right? Yeah, and that's actually a huge opportunity for them. And I think that's what's so cool about this app and your story is that you're a person who's really, truly blending the two things that you love. Because you kind of hustled quickly to get the banking job, to to get the quick flip kind of in a way of what you quick wanted flip. to do, right? Because you, you had a goal you needed to accomplish, and now you're like, oh my goodness. Like, one, like we can create this app. Um, and also benefit a lot of other people while benefiting ourselves, but also changing the mindset of a lot of people out there who otherwise don't get a lot of great financial advice. And I think the key is the long-term aspect because everybody that's thinking about stocks right now, or at least two years ago, you know, prior to everything going flat and choppy, was thinking like, let me get some options, let me get some puts, let me just while out right but they're not thinking about the long-term aspect that you're really trying to stress right you're trying to say time horizons way beyond what your day trading apps are trying to stress right that's crazy i I came here to talk to you guys about things i love and it turned into a therapy session because okay so i didn't realize i put two and two together the the mom the mom thing was about an instant flip you're right i never thought about it like that like i'm trying to get a buck i'm trying to cash this check and then now i'm thinking about generational Right. And so like whether whether it's the next generation or this generation, how do we how do we change that? Um, 
appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, that's I, what I we're here for. Upside mindset. Let's it's go. Therapy, <laughs> hey, also upside just mindset. To understand what your app is. Let's go. Yeah. No. All right. I mean, at the end of the day, listen, everybody. Um, uh, check out Neon Money Club. Look up more information on it. You know, I'm not here to tell you to throw in a bunch of money right now, but look a dollar. It. Right. Do your DD, do your due diligence. What I will say is that when you listen and you watch enough uh, stock trading advice channels or you talk to even people who are actually in the market professionally, they always tell you that a dollar cost average in. And that is, correct me if I'm wrong, essentially what ne one of the main things that Neon Money Club does um, amongst other things, you guys have the credit card coming out. You have a whole bunch of other financial resources for people to understand. And it's, you know, delivered in a way that they understand it's through the brands that they love. And that's the easiest way you take the Trojan horse, which is Nike, Jordan, Supreme, and you deliver information to them. Sucks. So you're not talking about copping the DMP package, but DCA. DCA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dude, we... Man, that was kind of an outdated statement. I, I like. I, I know the said, DMPs. I, I, DMP, waited I, like, I waited in line for those. I waited in line for those. One last thing to, before we close out the video, you always like to bring up taking L's on the sneakers app as as an example. Yeah, talk right. about the sneakers app thing because like you have an app, Neon Money Club. The sneakers app. A lot of people, obviously, it's even a badge of honor in a way, or like building camaraderie with others when you wake up at seven a.m. and you take an L. What was the connection here? For us, it's like. Man, there's. I think Nike just released this stat with like Hypebeast as well. They said they fight 12 billion bots every month on the sneakers app, and so like, you know, you know, you guys know how painful it is to get a, uh, an L on. Sneakers. I never hit. I never got a hit. I think I got a hit once, and it was on a sneaker that had no resale or like, you know what I mean? Like one of the ones that. And it's like wanted. it's almost like a like I love. I'm a Nike boy all day. Uh, you know, checks over stripes. Um, but at the end of the day, it's like. I want to buy the stuff, but I can't buy the stuff. They're not letting me buy the stuff. So we're like, well, if you're not letting me buy the stuff, I'm going to own the stuff instead. And and what I mean by own is ownership and equity. And so I've, I've been doing this with, with, with my, with my teammates and, and my boys. We, every time we get an L, we put that money that we would have spent otherwise into the stock market. So the two mm. apps they need to have are the sneakers app <laughs> and neon money club. <laughs> so that when they take the L on the sneakers app, you don't fully take an L. You still put something in the stock Tur market. Turn L's piece. into something better. E you know, equity. Equity. Turn equ L's into equity. Ooh. Ooh. L's into equity, not just stuff, stocks. Okay. All right, we, we are coming up with some new marketing taglines for you yeah. guys. <laughs> this is free. Y'all use it. But uh, thank you so much, Jackie. Um, your story was amazing. I hope hopefully people uh, connected with it. And I think the app is doing a lot of big things and it's got a great big goal. And I think changing the mindset, you know, of people who maybe don't always get the best financial advice. I think that's if you can speak to those people, it's amazing. Real so. quick, man. What are your favorite sneakers? My favorite. Actually, the threes, the Meniere threes. OK, because the theme of that was you like, pick it up, pick it, grab it, grab it, grab it. The whole thing with these was like the storytelling. It's a uh, it's it's. It's about the story of raised by women. Oh. And I was raised by my grandma and my mom. And so, like, and I have an all female household. So I've always, you know, cornered. But at the same time, it's a homage to that. And, and this is the, I think, is the best silhouette that Tinker did, like, for, for, of all time. And so look at the inside of these. Yeah. And you know what's crazy. interesting right now is I notice a lot of brands like Manier or Ame, they're French themed brands from America. America. <laughs> Bougie. <laughs> like, right, right, right. Yeah. It, it's. I feel like it's. Is that, that like Pellegrino? Is Pellegrino from Italy? Is that? I think American? that's from over there. Okay, that might so. be an actual European brand, right? But like, but you know what I'm saying? Like a French themed Americana. And I think it's just, it's it's after this this thing that people think is premium, which is fine. I think it's like French things are premium. Yeah, absolutely. The cheese, the wine. Do you see how many layers those pastries and those croissants? It's called right? Like, did you guys know that? Um, what's that? Uh, Paris baguette. Is it from France? It's Korean. Yeah, it's from South no, Korea, right? Because a real French brand would just have the name in French. Baguette. <laughs> and it would just be actually, they wouldn't have all the toppings on the bread. It would just be literally just a regular piece of bread. Yeah. But it would be like the most artistic, yeah. elevated piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, think about it. French people made snails popping. A lot of people, they will refuse go. to eat snails no. from any... If they you sell... Because Chinese eat snails too, right? But they would be like, oh my gosh, like Chinese snails are disgusting. But then there's escargot okay, with Karen. a little bit of guy ear on it. It's like, okay. They Bro, it's like, called escargot. It's not snail. Yes. It's escargot. Escargot. For a reason.
with it's, the it's, little squigglies. It's kind of good. That sounds like a sneaker uh, colorway. Like the we need to do that. Oh. Somebody needs to drop we the saw S-Cargo. There's that S-Cargo, the S-Cargo collab. There's going to be the S-Cargo collab. It's going to oh. come in a box in the shape of, of a, a snail, snail shell. Let me just say, because you know, I know we got to a lot of finance talk early, but I just want to get to some sneaker talk to end off. I'm going to be getting the Galaxy Foams once they oh. retro because I had a pair. I sold it for resale. I bought it high. I sold it for like maybe a, a couple hundred dollars profit. But now this is my chance because I think that foams are really like dipping in popularity. This is my chance to actually get them and maybe wear them without feeling like I'm throwing all my money away. Are you going to wait in line? How are you going to get them? You got the plug? Oh, that's a good point. I got to hit up Richie. That's what I'm no. going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Richie. I'm going to hit him up. Yeah, we, 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 we know some sneaker shops. We might have to hit him up. But uh, all right, yo, we're going to wrap it up there. Jackie, thank you for being Appreciate here with us. Again, check out Neon Money Club down below. Just look into it. Click on the link once. Just read it. And you decide for yourself. But thank you so much for explaining your app, man. And we appreciate it. This was another episode of Upside Mindset. As you know, just trying to bring on smart people who are doing cool things that could help you in your life. So until next time, everybody, we out. Peace. Peace. Greatest shoe of all time right here.